Okay folks, as you can see, I'm all packed and ready to go for my next adventure, which is going to be a Strezlecki Desert Adventure. Now in my side pannier bags, I've actually got fuel in each of them because I don't have enough endurance to get across the desert and I did want to do this unassisted. So some of my stuff I've actually sent through to the other end. So I've made the bike with some of the stuff that I didn't need, that wasn't essential, I've sent it through to Adelaide. And um, I've got the bare basics, bare basic clothing, as I mean, as always, I wear the same old <laughs> stuff every day, the same black t-shirt and jeans. And um, I'm really excited. It's gonna be about 29 degrees each day, and at the moment it's about 11.30. Um, getting a bit hot already, a bit later than what I normally leave, but you know, shit happens. And um, the main thing is I'm all ready to go, I'm excited, we're going to be camping out in the desert for a few days, and uh, yeah, I believe some of the road is a little bit, um, little bit iffy, but the old 70-30 tyres on my bike have been really, really good, I must say, and I've handled some pretty gnarly bits of road on it some sand and some gravel but I'm hoping that you know I'm just going to be patient I'm just going to really take my time for the really I've heard some really gnarly bits along this track because as you can see obviously the weight's very low on it it is a road bike it's not an enduro bike and it's not an adventure tourer anyway I'm all excited as you can tell and you and I are going to have a desert adventure let's do it shoot some more film for you last night in fact I only got one singular shot <laughs> and the story behind that is that I um, laid down briefly for a moment and I fell asleep <laughs> that's how tired I must have been 
It was really quite a full-on day because um, I left a lot later than what I would usually leave and I actually rode about a hundred more kilometers than I expected that I was going to ride so I guess I was really tired but uh, the wind really um, you know I battled it yesterday but it did subside long enough for me to get some drone footage and then it picked up again just of course as I was putting the tent up Murphy's Law right and so <laughs> by the time I put the tent up and I'd uh, dealt with the wind I just kind of lied down for a moment and I just fell asleep I guess it, it was so peaceful here it was just uh, listening to the wind and just the silence here and being here on my own and I think I just I was so peaceful <laughs> anyway I woke up sometime during the night and I could hear this howling uh, I could imagine his dingoes and I thought I had this thought in my head going oh no please don't eat me <laughs> I've got so much more journey left to go <laughs> anyway so uh, anyway I must have gone back to sleep and um yeah I now awake and I've got this lovely red tinge on me from <laughs> as you can see that my tent is red and black <laughs> the sun's coming through this uh, side and I'm looking forward to seeing what adventure I've got today. A few people have told me that the southern end which I'm doing today of the Strezelecki track is really quite rough so uh, yeah so far so good but I thank God for the 70-30 tyres and yeah let's just see what today's going to bring shall we. Buddy I'm glad you're on the outside of my tent and not the inside.
love the wind you know it gives me that like windswept Hollywood look without needing that big fan <laughs> I digress I have finished I have finished the Strzelecki track and by geez did it try and throw everything at me in a good way in a really good way it was rather windy but I did have enough time to put the drone up again today so yay for that oh what can I say about the Strzelecki track I think most people think desert they think same old same old boring yada yada no the desert changes sometimes subtly and then you know you'll be riding over a sand dune and then you'll be at the crest of it and the vista in front oh my god it'll just absolutely take your breath away from the colors in the sands to the grasses just to how it all you know the some of the undulations and some of the rocky plains and I mean it was just the moonscape a uh, bit of the countryside um, the drone shots I got the night before um, where I camped at Monte Kalina Boar it was more moonscapey I thought anyway and that was very different to what I rode through today so I mean there was just such a great mix of landscape the conditions of the road weren't nearly as gnarly in my personal opinion as what some people made it out to be I did it of course on the GS 500 road bike and it it was sweet because of the tires the those meteor tires just gave me a little bit better traction on the road so I was able to go a little bit faster even faster than a sloth today <laughs> no there was some bits in all honesty and no offense to sloths I think they're great but oh my gosh <laughs> some bits I had to go right down to like 30 kilometer yawn inducing speed but you know I don't want to come unstuck and drop it because I don't have the drop you know bars around the engine and I'll do some damage so I was being a little bit careful anyway most of the road you know you can cruise along at 60 70 k's up to 80 kilometers I think um there's some really smooth hard and compacted ground which you can really kind of fly over because some of the road they're actually prepping to seal it I believe within the next two years it'll be fully sealed which in my opinion takes the the romanticism away from it and the reason that we motorcyclists get out and want to do something a little bit more challenging than Asphalt. I mean, how challenging is Asphalt? Not very challenging at all, one must say. So, oh my gosh, if you've got a chance to do this road before they seal it, I say do it. On normal road tyres, yeah, I'd, I'd slow down a bit more. I'd slow down and take it a bit easier. Um, I'm sure as hell glad I didn't have the normal um, road tyres on this bike. Otherwise, I think, I don't know, it would have been a bit iffier in places. There was some, like, rocky bits that, you know, like the um, marbly, pebbly bits that could bring you unstuck if you were sort of not paying attention. It was a little bit rutty in parts, but for most of it, some of it was really really corrugated to that real feeling and um you know it's like i need to pull over and have a bit of a break from this but other than that i mean the camping i got to experience camping in the desert on my own at monte Colina bore and apart from wondering whether i was going to be the dingo's main meal that night it was really surreal it was i i felt like i was the only person on the planet and to be honest these days that's not a bad thing <laughs> anyway i digress it's definitely a dry weather road that one and that goes without saying and i think you would have an amazing time if you decided to do this road before they seal it and uh, it's definitely a bucket lister just to enjoy that peace of mind that riding just on your own with your bike can bring very hugely satisfying and i'm so so grateful i did it anyway i will see you on the next episode of her motorcycle adventures thanks for tuning in and have an awesome awesome week